Hello and Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Moabudu. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Ebony Life Media and Ebony Life Place. I would like to take a few minutes of your time today to shed some light on the recent allegations made by the investigative reporter Tobore Ovore. Tobore wrote the article titled Inside Nigeria's Ruthless Human Trafficking Mafia, which was published on August 12, 2014 by the Premium Times, her employer at the time. Premium Times Services Limited, publishers of Premium Times, has disclosed that journalist Tobore Ovore cannot lay claim to the copyright over the investigative report, which belongs to them. According to the Premium Times Editor-in-Chief, Mr. Mujid, only the media company and its partner on that project, ZAM Chronicles, can lay claim to the copyright for the report, based on Nigeria's copyright law. We sought and obtained the rights from Premium Times, the owners of the story. As such, we fulfilled our legal obligation and do not take kindly to suggestions stating otherwise. There are several instances where we have acquired the rights to other stories, books and plays, such as Queen Hunter, Death and the King's Horseman, and The Secret Lives of Baba Sebi's Wives. This is how our industry works. We dare not make a film without acquiring the rights. Although I have addressed our legal obligations, which were fully met, there are also moral issues to be dealt with in a case like this. So in May 2019, 20 months before the launch of Olutore on Netflix, we reached out to Tobore to acknowledge her journalistic achievement, to commend, recognize, and encourage her in her ongoing campaign against sex trafficking and that of her NGO. We granted Tobore a private screening of the movie, gave her a special mention in the end credits of Olutore, and I interviewed her on Moments with Mo. In addition, we wrote to her and offered her 5% of the proceeds from our planned cinema run to go towards her NGO, which she acknowledged. We also reached out to other NGOs to pledge proceeds from our cinema run, as Olutore was never created as a commercial film. We felt that it was an important film to make, and several kind donors helped us to raise the money to make it. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the cinema release of Olutore never happened. Instead, we decided to partner with Netflix, and the film was released on the 2nd of October 2020. Only a day after our release on Netflix, I got a phone call from a reporter, Kiki Modi, who said she had been in touch with Tobori. Here is part of her subsequent email. I'm reaching out to you today because various similarities have been flagged between a 2014 investigative report featured in Premium Times and the film, and I want to include that in my report. My report is due to be out today. Apologies for the short timing. I'm hoping to clarify some facts from you and hopefully get your comments. We decided to respond, although we didn't have to. That article is available online. Within a few days of this, Tobori went on social media making accusations. Then she wrote to Netflix making demands. Then she launched an attack against Kenneth Ingyang. I feel particularly bad for Kenneth because he had never seen the script until we approached him to direct the film. He's such a passionate filmmaker, but he's had to deal with daily and weekly harassment from Tobore. Then on the 4th of November 2020, a month after the movie was launched on Netflix, we got a letter from Tobore's lawyers accusing us of copyright infringement and demanding $5 million in compensation, which is over 2.5. It's about 2.5 billion naira. At this point, our in-house lawyer advised that we needed to engage external legal counsel, which we did. We were being accused of the crime of copyright infringement with a 2.5 billion naira demand. We knew we had not infringed on her copyright because Premium Times owns the copyright and we had settled this with them. Secondly, we did not have 2.5 billion naira to give. In an attempt to understand what her demands were based on, our lawyers began meeting with hers. Unfortunately, that process has stalled because her lawyer has disengaged from her. Recently, Dubori started contacting our producers by WhatsApp and sending them horrid messages. To me, Dubori's demands have become threatening, blackmailing, and extortionist in nature, and I do not respond to such methods. At this point, we decided that if she felt she had a legal case, it could be better dealt with through the proper legal channels. Prior to the release of 
the film on Netflix, I had a good relationship with Tubore. I had interviewed her, I had met with her, I had even given her cash gifts for her welfare, as well as when her father died, something that I have never disclosed till now. On the 5th of July 2020, I received this message from her. Good evening, Ma. How are you, work, and the family? I hope you are well. Please remember my family and I in your prayers. My father went to be with the Lord on Friday, July 3rd, 2020. It's been a very difficult a period for me. My dad and God was all I had. But now I'm left alone to myself. Thanks, Ma, to Bori. On the 14th of July, 2020, I received this message from her. Good morning, Ma. Thanks so much for the money sent to me. I greatly appreciate your care and support. God bless you. I'm so grateful. I will keep you updated. So we had a relationship. She even sent me a message on my birthday in September 2020. And then, a few days before the release on Netflix, I sent her a text message. Hi, dear. It's strictly on just Netflix. No cinema due to COVID. I promised you a cash gift towards your foundation, and I will still make it happen, even though we did not have a cinema release. Get everyone to watch on Netflix. This was her reply. Okay, ma. I'll look at how to get them to watch on Netflix. Most of them are not online and can't afford being on Netflix, but I'll get around it. Congrats, ma. By the 3rd of October 2020, a day after the launch on Netflix, I couldn't reach Tabore. I sent her a text message saying, Tabore, my dear, trust your well, I'm trying to reach you. Everything changed after the growing popularity of the film on Netflix. I have said this time and time again, but let me state it again for the record. Olu Tore is a story inspired by true events involving the work of scriptwriters, the development of characters, locations, situations and occurrences that were created by our writers. There was no Alero, Chooks, Linda or Blessing in Tobore's newspaper report. Her boss was never in love with her, one of the several parts of the film that was created by our writers. Certain incidents in Olu Tore are similar to what happened to Tobore and this is why she was given credit and why Premium's Times was given credit. However, Ulutore could never be Tobore's life story, as she has claimed. Indeed, so many women from around the world are trafficked to Italy, have similar stories. Please, let's educate ourselves on how the movie industry works and how stories are developed and what inspires them. Ulutore was made by a team of over 100 people, including researchers, writers, producers, our director, editors, actors, and crew. NAPTIP, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, supported us with research, locations, and vehicles. One of our producers, James Amuta, had recently made an award-winning documentary called Nightfall in Lagos, which was all about prostitution. We brought him in on this project because of his experience. What Tuburi experienced is what hundreds of thousands of women and girls experience around the world. The stats on human trafficking are horrendous, and we made this movie to shed light on this horrid trade. Earnings are estimated at 150 billion globally. Two thirds of this figure, about 100 billion, is generated from commercial sexual exploitation. The average woman trafficked for forced exploitation generates about $100,000 in annual profits. If there is one thing that I stand for, it is integrity. It's about working hard and always standing up for what I believe in. My entire team know me. Many of you out there know me. We do what we do because we love what we do. We have not exploited Tobori or anyone else, and we will not be exploited by anyone. The facts are clear. We have everything in writing, and we are prepared to defend ourselves against baseless attacks and legal challenges. We will not be intimidated because of the imagined financial success of this film, Olutore. However, our door is always open to have a conversation that is appropriate and right, which is how we began our relationship with Tobori. Anything else will be refuted and rebuffed, and if necessary, settled in a court of law. Finally, let me say that I have observed the sensationalized coverage in many of the comments on social media regarding this matter. And none of it has been grounded in evidence that could be easily verified. The media did not even ask us to comment on the allegations before publishing them. Social media has given everyone a voice, and that's a good thing. But please, let's use it responsibly. Thank you for listening, and once again, Happy New Year. Please subscribe to this channel.
channel please subscribe please subscribe subscribe share this video subscribe to this channel tell your friends to subscribe